9 year old girl who have been uh, who presented in our uh, unit with progressive yellowish uh, discoloration of skin and eyes for a month along with dark yellow urine there is history of itching and clay colored stools for about the same duration and uh, there is no past history of significant illness there is no history of any uh, consume uh, consumption of any medications the anthropometry is normal the sensorium is normal there is no history of bleeding and on examination there is a uh, hepatomegaly of 4 cm so what you are dealing with in here first of all are we dealing with an acute liver disease or we are dealing with a chronic liver disease so first of all we may ask whether it's a liver disease or something else okay so anybody who thinks it's not a liver disease so uh polystatic jaundice without complication i think let's answer one by one what dhira sir has raised is a very pertinent query uh, we all agree this is a liver disease and there is a uh, another um, suggestion it could be a biliary disease and then answers are acute or chronic we have um akansha saying acute uh, i am waiting for more answers acute biliary so more uh, uh, students in favor of acute 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 this is a acute uh, okay there is a one uh, uh, again arun is in the says chronic prachi says chronic deepak says chronic dolly says acute uh, so we have a mixed bag uh, dhira sir back to you okay. and so i am happy i am happy that there is a mixed bag because this could be either acute or chronic so the uh, acuteness uh, or chronicity of liver disease does not depend only on the uh, duration of symptoms for the child to present with liver inflammation uh, liver dysfunction may be very prolonged because liver is a organ which has tremendous uh, capacity so liver dysfunction starts happening only when the significant uh, proportion or significant amount of liver is Uh, damaged so uh, the ongoing inflammation may be asymptomatic for quite some time so duration of symptoms really do not determine whether it is acute or chronic so but there would be various clues uh, towards the chronicity if present i would say the duration could be as i said duration could be short even in uh, chronic so features would would suggest chronicity if there is history of neonatal jaundice history of past episodes of jaundice if there is family history of liver disease in form of either wilson's disease or autoimmune disease if there is growth failure in form of short stature or wasting if there is pedal edema which suggests a hypoproteinemia if there are features of portal hypertension if the child the same child if uh, on examination has a large spleen then uh, definitely it would be more uh, favoring the chronic liver disease if there is massive ascites again chronic because it uh, because of portal hypertension if there is cutaneous manifestations of chronic liver disease in form of spider angioma edema all this may suggest a chronic liver disease if the liver is enlarged but it is irregularly enlarged it is firm it is regular it will definitely suggest chronic liver disease even if the duration of symptomatology is only a week so uh, as rightly said it could be either acute or chronic depending on lots of other things which need to ask in this girl and their family and some additional examination is needed to delineate and not only history and examination then sometimes the only the investigations may tell you that you are dealing with the chronic liver disease if the liver enzymes are not very raised if the serum protein is low so if the prothrombin time is prolonged it is not corrected by vitamin k so all these could be uh, features of hepatic synthetic dysfunction which happen more commonly in chronic decompensated liver disease so friends uh, and dear students the features which would suggest the chronicity dr dhiraj has beautifully uh, listed them uh, can we have a quick round of uh, you can write these uh, features which would suggest a chronic uh, liver disease coagulation ascites uh anything hypoalbuminemia splenomegaly history of neonatal jaundice neonatal history yes past history family history of liver disease abnormal anthropometry upper gi bleed cutaneous manifestation what else uh, dr dheeraj said features of portal hypertension already said bleeding yes 
what about hepatomegaly very good very good palmer erythema massive site i think you have covered each and everything thank you so that means whatever dr dheeraj is uh, uh, hammering is going across thank you so just, much just a couple of clarification there the ascites can be present in acute but that ascites usually mild to moderate if you see massive ascites it is more likely to be chronic similarly with splenomegaly just palpable soft spleen could be seen in acute uh, hepatitis or acute liver disease but if you find a large spleen and firm spleen it is more likely to be because of portal hypertension than the primary disease which led to uh, acute hepatitis so again the firm large spleen and massive ascites these are two features uh, which distinguish chronic from acute dr dheeraj could this be acute hepatic failure so i would direct this question to participants can i direct okay. so could this be acute hepatic failure yes or no so if this is acute no. hepatitis can this uh, yes hepatic sensorium is normal no 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 all the answers are no except only one that was yes no signs of encephalopathy no inr majors uh, yes uh, inr is okay is important sensorium normal no bleeding itching uh, suggestive cholestasis no sensorium is normal so the the mass opinion is in favor of that there is no hepat there is no encephalopathy so acute liver failure is not there but somebody has also suggested that we should have an idea of inr which is not given in the present uh, uh, case uh, slide so over to you dr dheeraj now so yes it could be although there is no clinical clues towards uh, uh, presence of acute liver failure but remember the definition of acute liver failure is that a child with no previously known Uh, um, uh, liver dysfunction or liver disease if there is acute hepatic dysfunction as apparent by ri- rise in alt along with inr of more than 2 if there is no encephalopathy and more than 1.5 if there is encephalopathy so it means that if even if there is no encephalopathy everything is all right but if the uh, prothrombin time test results show a international normalized ratio of more than 2 which does not get corrected after vitamin k remember in acute uh, as well as chronic uh, cholestasis itself can lead to vitamin k deficiency but your uh, if inr is not corrected even after giving vitamin k injection uh, then you need to consider that this child may be having acute liver failure so i would say yes if the inr is beyond 2 in this child and uh, it is uncorrected by giving vitamin k so that would uh, satisfy the definition of acute liver failure in this child okay thank you so we can go ahead uh, there is a query from uh, arun sir is there difference in management of acute liver failure we'll come to uh, the management part later on we'll remember that he is asking is there difference in management of acute liver failure and acute and chronic liver failure with same symptoms so we'll reserve that for the end uh, in the meantime i'll go to dr dheeraj for the next uh, now my next question to all the participants is like how will you approach uh, this child or uh, or straight away what could be the differential diagnosis of this child and then if we know the differential diagnosis we would know how to approach so what could be the differential diagnosis with this kind of presentation uh, here we are assuming that there is no past history no family history no medication and uh, everything appears to favor acute hepatic dysfunction here examination of the liver i would say that there is no abnormality except for the hepatomegaly and no large spleen just just borderline palpable spleen so how will you uh, what could be the differential diagnosis with such presentation so uh, we have yeah wilson hepatitis viral markers are the answers that have come up pfic autoimmune hepatitis okay Dr. Dheeraj. So most often, uh, this would uh, be result of acute uh, uh, hepatotropic uh, viral hepatitis, either because of hepatitis A and sometimes because of hepatitis B and E. So uh, these would be the most common in our setting. And then Wilson definitely is a cause, especially if uh, we are dealing a girl. 
child and uh, the child is already 9 year old so beyond 6 year old you should uh, definitely suspect wilson even if the presentation is acute and uh, then there could be like my metabolic or mitochondrial uh, encephalopathies and hepatopathies which could uh, cause but there would be rare causes autoimmune hepatitis will more commonly cause a chronic uh, liver disease presentation but yes it can rarely cause an acute uh, hepatitis like syndrome also so these would be the most important diagnosis i would say acute viral hepatitis is the most common one followed by wilson followed by metabolic and autoimmune okay so um, again coming down to what are the investigations uh, needed to diagnose the cause of acute liver failure disease in this child so the investigation would be uh, we have a differential diagnosis we will go for uh, igm for hepatitis a and hepatitis let them i think dr dhir let the participants answer that again lft is too broad see never say lft lft is not a single uh, test at all viral markers which viral marker there are so many of them bilirubin sgot sgpt values okay liver enzyme what else specific diagnosis transaminases sgpt sgot will just indicate that liver parenchymal dysfunction anything else uh, about the etiological diagnosis what investigations you could do etiological diagnosis igm hepatitis a okay what else anti hav igm okay for wilson what else for wilson ggt uh kf ring kf ring kf ring is KF ring is uh, ideally KF ring is not an investigation, is it? KF ring is an examination finding. But yet I agree. <laughs> like in exam, you also say, sir, uh, investigation fundus exam fundus is an investigation. Fundus is not an investigation. It is an examination finding. KF ring is absolutely right. Twenty four hour uh, ceruloplasmin copper serum ceruloplasmin. Dear sir, back to you. I just uh, remember a joke here. Uh, in du- during my uh, post graduation days, uh, we asked uh, one of the junior resident to send all these investigation in a case of, uh, I think, chronic liver disease, which included KF rings. And in the morning, we saw one vial uh, of blood where the <laughs> was written as KF rings. And then the nursing orderly asked where to take the sample to. So I was amused seeing that the KF rings, the sample has been sent in a EDTA vial. So this you need to continuously train your junior residents uh, that what this investigation is meant to and where it is to be sent. So as rightly said that it is not an investigation which is to be sent in blood. It is an examination. So but very important in this case. So already uh, everything has been highlighted here uh, based on potential diagnosis. But what another additional. thing uh, i would say that uh, the liver uh, markers like sgpt sgot serum bilirubin alkaline phosphatase these are also important not only to diagnose hepatic dysfunction but their pattern can give you some clue towards the etiology people have uh, got several scores made and if that score is positive it may be more likely to be having so for example if you have uh, uh, ast to alt uh, or that is sgot to sgpt ratio more than 2 Uh, that is more suggestive of wilson's whereas in uh, viral hepatitis you will have alt raised many times more than uh, ast so and even the ratio of alkaline phosphatase to serum bilirubin uh, that has been suggested to be a marker of uh, wilson's disease so the pattern may give you some clue but definite diagnosis would be based on the test like serum ceruloplasmin 24 hours urinary copper and uh, examination of uh, fundus or eyes by slit lamp for kf ring so now you are all aware of this case uh so may i ask the participants to write in the chat box uh management of a child with acute liver failure what are the various components of the prescription that one has to write when writing or giving a diagnosis of or iv fluid normal saline okay perfect you have iv dextrose normal saline or what else please write one by one vitamins um, okay uh, ad adek what's that i didn't understand maintain electrolyte lactulose lactulose vitamin k reduce cholestasis with udca lactulose again vitamin adek okay udca fine uh, in case of hepatitis corticosteroids 
let's concentrate on the generic management of just liver failure not specific to the disease it's general just for the rifaximin okay that is lactulose or rifaximin uh, is it still relevant or outdated we'll come to that from dr dheeraj oral neomycin uh, ffp is i think it is fresh frozen plasma according to inr uh, nac inhibitors uh, and anything else we haven't monitor inr tnf alpha tnf alpha inhibitors vitamin k uh, if it is encephalopathy do we require anything else or uh, anything for related to infection prevent increase in broad spectrum antibiotics yes that's another now it has come up uh, nac so these are the if there are seizures manitol yes manitol antibiotics cefotexime and aerobic coverage so dr dheeraj you have a, a hold of uh, so I, I would first of all just tell uh, why are we discussing management of acute liver failure here uh, this is a real example of a girl who presented and uh, who had inr raised and uh, the child was in acute uh, liver failure and within a couple of days the child went into altered sensorium and came sick so they have a girl like this or child like this working Uh, the uh, diagnosis here was hepatitis A, and uh, the management of acute liver failure. You need to suspect liver failure. Do not assume that if there is no encephalopathy, there is no liver failure because the child may become sick if you miss. So the supportive ma- management of acute liver failure is mainly supportive, which involves uh, intravenous dextrose, normal saline, or uh, uh, any fluid which contains about 10% of dextrose along with electrolytes. then uh, measures to relieve cerebral edema if there are features of irritability and seizures like hypertonic saline manitol and then antibiotics if there is any clue towards infection especially if there is fever or leukocytosis you must treat with the broad spectrum iv antibiotic like cefotexime and gentamicin and the control of seizure is important if there is seizure with uh, control of seizure the pheno phenytoin should be preferred over phenobarbital which should be avoided and then uh, the treatments like high bubble wash lactulose rifaximin they have become outdated they have not been shown to be of much benefit uh, but you must avoid uh, constipation if constipation is there then you may need to administer some agents to relieve the child of constipation uh, there is no specific treatment the treatment would uh, depend on the cause for most of the etiology you do not have any specific treatment except when you have wilson disease or autoimmune hepatitis as the presentation you may treat with steroids uh, for autoimmune hepatitis uh, and uh, if the child does not respond or at the init- at the initiation of treatment if there are some markers which suggest that the child is going to have a severe turbulent course uh, now their scores have been devised by various agencies which indicate uh, the liver transplantation so in these children you should always think of uh, possibility of liver transplantation and discuss it with the parents at least that if the measures fail or if your investigation suggests that this is a high risk patient you should discuss the possibility of liver transplantation in this child which is now available in many indian uh, hospitals even in acute liver failure they are doing it there is a, there are two questions regarding the um, uh, placement of the child what is the recommendation of bed rest in acute hepatitis i think not in failure but they want to ask uh, like in kab tak chutti leni hai and should the patient be placed in trendlenburg position uh, these are the two questions one related to acute hepatitis other related to probably acute hepatic failure so uh, if we see the body physiology most of the patients would not feel like uh, moving around playing too much so we should allow their uh, physiology to take care of the uh, activity if they are like they are interested in doing the activity they should be allowed uh, the activity at home uh, definitely we do not want them to further become sick by getting an abdominal trauma so they should not be allowed to play uh, outside with especially the place where they are likely to get injured or they are likely to get exerted but uh, normal activities at home should be encouraged uh, there is no need for absolute bed rest unless uh, the body itself wants that so if body itself wants bed rest then it should be allowed Uh, same with the appetite there is no need to restrict any kind of food if the child feels like eating the food should be provided if the child has a poor appetite we should respect the child's appetite and have uh, have kind of patient eating so that the child does not uh, go into hypoglycemia so allow frequent small meals 
and allow activity at home there is no need for absolute bed rest and uh, there is no role of any uh, specific position okay. or uh, management of equipment yeah guess. two more um, uh, queries uh, role of hepamers and the role of l or methine l aspirins in uh, i would say that uh, these uh, amino acids although promoted by companies they have no role in management of acute hepatitis regarding n acetyl cysteine uh, there was an era when n acetyl cysteine was recommended by the agencies for all kind of uh, acute uh, liver failure but uh, now it is uh, indicated only in specific uh, situations like paracetamol poisoning so low protein diet sir hmm? role of low protein diet again the uh, diet uh, uh, if the diet the total diet uh, you should not restrict the protein uh, very much it should be uh, a normal uh, kind of diet uh, there is no uh, role of uh, restricting the protein altogether in uh, acute liver failure now it is you should you may allow uh, uh, protein which is recommended a da- daily allowance for that type Thank you, Doctor Dheeraj. I think that was a wonderful case which covered almost. So, last two cases gave us a glimpse into the liver failure and the acute and chronic liver failure, hepatic failure, acute chronic liver disease, and finally the management of acute liver failure and investigation also. So, a very good learning. In-